him. I want to watch the, the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. Smack him a garbage time for the only news that matters on Kiss Wednesday. And for many film fans who don't happen to be card-carrying members of the KISS Army, the movie Detroit Rock Cities is little more than a cinematic footnote. After all, this was an unsuccessful rock comedy that used a KISS concert as the storyline in the 70s that attempted to harken back to cult classics like Rock and Roll High School. For former KISS members Ace Fraley and Peter Chris, however, the event leading up to the movie's August 13, 1999 release helped bring their time in the band to a permanent end. According to Peter Chris, the movie started as a passion project for producer Tom Sullivan, who befriended Gene Simmons after interviewing him for Fangoria in 1983. Given the embarrassment the band had suffered with the infamous Phantom of the Park project in 1978, Simmons knew the script for any Kiss film needed to be just right. The movie followed a group of Kiss-loving Cleveland kids who must endure all sorts of shenanigans in order to make it to a Kiss show in Detroit. This storyline seems to play directly to the band's image while leaving plenty of room for the kind of good old-fashioned teen hijinks that crowded the drive-ins during Kiss's heyday. But according to Peter Chris, things started to go wrong almost immediately, and it was all Gene Simmons' fault. You know, Ace, Paul Stanley, and I didn't even know about the movie until we read about it in The Hollywood Reporter. Uh, Peter Chris wrote in his autobiography. He said, after we met with Tim and the producers, I was excited. This wasn't some Hanna-Barbera, uh, you know, stuff. This was a real movie with a director. Adam Rifkin, who I had heard about and admired for his movie, Mouse Hunt. I really wanted to work on it. But then Gene started fucking everything up. From Peter Chris's point of view, Simmons' heavy-handed approach extended to every level of the production. When it came time to plot out the soundtrack, Peter Chris alleged that Simmons refused to include any songs that weren't written by himself and Stanley, so he could grab a bigger piece of the profits. That meant eliminating Peter Chris's signature song, Beth. He said Simmons then proceeded to micromanage the script in ways that embarrassed Peter Chris and Ace Frehley. He had them take out a scene where the kids met us backstage because according to him, Ace and Peter can't act. This is Peter Chris saying this in Make Up to Break Up. He also said, then he told the other producers as the director that Ace and I were like children and we needed to be kept on a tight leash. You know, this was all part of Simmons' aspiration to branch out into the film and television industry, according to Peter Chris, He accused Gene Simmons of licking every new line asshole he could find because he was so desperate to break into Hollywood. I remember he'd be in limos and Gene would say, can we have some quiet in the car, please? I'm expecting a call from Steven Spielberg. Of course, the call never came. Yeah, whether or not any of this happened, that's only evident to suggest that Simmons may have been somewhat distracting by Detroit Rock City. Sullivan recalled Simmons calling him on the mobile phone to discuss the movie while Peter Chris was in the middle of his drum solo during a Kiss gig. Wow, that's crazy. According to Peter Chris, producers asked Kiss for a new version of the song Detroit Rock City. Unfortunately, 
not even the opportunity to revisit one of their classic cuts for the soundtrack could heal this divide. Yeah, they did record that, right? I think that's the thing, last thing Kiss ever recorded was Detroit Rock City. Peter Chris said, uh, the last thing the original lineup ever recorded together. Yeah, that's what I thought. Sadly, due to what Peter Chris described as a mix-up, the title song update didn't even make it on the soundtrack. This wasn't the only unfortunate last-minute edit, either. According to Ace Frehley, his daughter Monique filmed a scene in the movie at Simmons' suggestion, only to discover at a private screening that her appearance had been left on the cutting room floor. Ace said, I know it wasn't an accident. Gene had been involved in the editing process on a daily basis. And even remember getting tapes from him early on with alternate scenes and endings. But Monique's scene was always included. I knew Gene was probably pissed at me for something I had done, but to get back at me by hurting my daughter? I mean, it was his idea in the first place. So what the fuck was he doing? If Simmons was truly behind the edit, he had Rifkin support. Gene was a fantastic producer to work for. He loves movies and is very respectful of the process. Whenever we found ourselves at a creative crossroads with each other, he would always defer to me because I was the director. And he also fought on my behalf against the studio if there was ever a creative disagreement. Gene's great. That's Adam Rifkin talking. And regardless of who was ultimately responsible, Ace Frehley found it impossible to forgive Gene Simmons for hurting his daughter. He said, I never felt the same about Gene after that. He had reached an all-time low with me. And this particular snub contributed greatly to my second departure from KISS. Ultimately, all the angst didn't add up to much in a way of ticket sales. Uh, Detroit Rock City pulled in less than $5 million in the theatrical run, a disastrous showing for a movie with a reported $34 million budget. The project eventually acquired something of a cult status on the home video market. But the damage was already done as far as the band's relations were concerned. Peter said, we dyed our hair, we gave our blood, we struggled and cooked for each other in seedy hotels because we were a band, not a brand. And it's shocking and horrifying that Gene Simmons has forgotten that. Well, there you go. Uh, man, Gene Simmons was like that while you were in the band, Peter. You don't remember that shit? You were probably too fucked up on drugs, but either way, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of drama with Kiss. That's why there's always news on Kiss every damn week, huh? Uh, as far as this movie, I don't think I've ever reviewed Detroit Rock City on this channel. If I have, then you're probably going to hear me mirror, well, maybe not, because actually I watched Detroit Rock City now for the first time in many many years. I haven't seen it in a, in a long time. And I did see it in the theater. And there was nobody there. Seriously, it was only me and this girl I was dating. Nobody else was in the theater. And I'm talking about the first weekend it came out. I think it was either Saturday or Sunday. I went to go see it with her. And it was completely empty. I was like, ooh, this don't look good. But I enjoyed the movie. I don't think it's bad. Yeah, some parts are stupid. Like, you know, the part where the, the disco guys get beat up and put in kiss makeup. That whole scene was stupid. And also, the unbelievable scene of the guy that goes into some junkyard or something and there's guard dogs and then all of a sudden the guard dogs are his friends and he sicks them on people and he only knew the guard dogs for what? couple minutes take out those two scenes it's a fun movie there's a lot of stupid shit in it i love uh, the trip the long hair character I, my favorite scene ever even the first time i saw it in the theater 
My favorite scene ever is the little kid standing outside <laughs> of the of the super of the little quickie mart thing, and he's uh, 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 wants to go steal the kids tickets from him. He's like, give me those kiss tickets, kids. And he's like, we don't, we don't like kiss. And the other kid goes, kiss sucks. Just the way he says it. Best part of the whole movie. And, but it's a fun movie, man. I mean, it has his quirky parts and a, you know, a little sappy love story here and there. But I thought it was fun. You know, it's a fun, stupid movie. They're trying, they were trying to do rock, uh, rock and roll high school which Rock and Roll High School can't be messed with. You know, it's perfect, you know, and if you try to recreate Rock and Roll High School, it's not going to have that lightning in the bottle, but there were some good, funny parts in this movie that I really enjoyed. And I enjoyed seeing the last scene with kids playing. And I'm talking about in the theater with the big screen. That was awesome, you know. But I enjoyed the movie. You know, I thought it was fun. I didn't know about the, all this drama going on until you read the books, you know. But it was a fun movie. It was not bad, according to me. So what it is, is according to you. Leave it in the comments below what you feel about Detroit Rock City. And uh, thank you so much for watching The Only News That Matters. I really do appreciate it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Ring that little notification bell. And if you are subscribed, please to check if you're still subscribed because people are getting unsubscribed for no reason. And I don't get it, man. I think that's lame as hell. And please like the video because it's good for the YouTube. Army. So stay frosty. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies. Farewell and adieu, you ladies of Spain. For we've received orders for to sail back to Boston. And so never more shall we see you again. <laughs>